Hey guys, how you doing? I'm Uncle Steph. So today I'm going to talk about my predictions for 2025. What will happen in the software development coding world? Are we going to have World War III? Are we going to have AI domination and destruction? Are we going to go into a Mad Max apocalypse? And other good stuff like that. Well, the good news is Ruby will still be a very marginal language, so you don't have to worry about Ruby. I think what you have to do is you have to look at the big demographic changes. So that means you've got lots of boomers who are retiring, looking for second jobs, looking to start new businesses. And so there's going to be a need for a lot of small website development, uh, small web professional, not small, small jobs for web professionals. So that could be software development, building uh, simple websites, WordPress, uh, yeah, not so much Drupal, integrating PayPal, Stripe, other payment processors, coming up with a cohesive web design and development strategy for small business. So why do I emphasize small business? Because small business means a certain type of development. The important thing here is that we're not not going to be having to deal with Ruby. That's very important, first and foremost. So it's a certain type of development, which means... Not so much C++, not so much Swift, not so much Python. It's all going to be about the web, front end, back end, both ends. You want to work both ends optimally. Uh, if you work both ends, then you're going to have maximum penetration into the market. That's for sure. So we're looking at HTML5, CSS3, uh, JavaScript. Not so much React, not so much Vue. Actually, much more probable that you're going to be leveraging things like jQuery, Bootstrap for layout. That's small business development. That's what it's about. The 800-pound uh, elephant in the room, of course, is PHP. If you're doing small business development, PHP is going to come in handy quite a bit. Why PHP? Well, because of WordPress, Drupal, uh, because there's already a huge investment in the small business community vis-a-vis -vis, uh, PHP. It's just the way it is. So uh, you have to think about all those hundreds of thousands, well, millions and millions of websites that have been developed since the 90s. A lot of them are stagnant. Uh, a lot of them are going to be up, need to be updated. And they got PHP. They got WordPress. So it's like it's very likely that you're going to be using PHP and the web stack. Again, what I'm talking about here for 2025 is market share. I'm talking about probability of where the business is going to be. Uh, it's not about the technological advantages or disadvantages, as in Ruby. It's not about the technological advantages or disadvantages of a particular technology. You have to, as a mature professional developer, you have to learn to be language, technology, neutral or agnostic, not care about one or the other. So in my career as a professional developer, going back to the 1990s, I became a better developer, a mature bit developer, a professional developer, when I let go of, I'm a Java developer. I used to think, hey, I'm a Java developer. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just code in Java because Java's the best, God damn it. I got my framework that I built in Java. I'm highly productive in Java. And that's all I'm going to do is Java. When I let that go, when I learned to let that go, I uh, became a far more productive, a far more profitable and a far more advanced developer. Because what I found, much to my great surprise, that whatever language or technology I would leverage, uh, there was a certain advantage to it and disadvantage to it. So even though I was pretty much a staunch Java developer, as I said, with my own framework and so forth, uh, when I jumped into PHP for the first time, this is lousy PHP, 3.0 PHP, garbage compared to what it is today. Today, so you know, uh, PHP is an enterprise level language, has all the capabilities as a C Sharp, as a Java, as a Python, etc., as a JavaScript. The differences between the languages these days in terms of uh, their abilities and productivity and so forth, they're all pretty much the same, except for Ruby. So as long as you avoid Ruby, it doesn't really matter what language you use. What you have to do is you have to mature yourself as a developer and you have to look at the languages as tools in your tool belt, and you'll use whatever language makes sense for the job. Yeah, so for 2025, I think there's going to be a lot more opportunity for small business 
development, which, of course, as I said earlier, means WordPress, means PHP, means web stack. Become flexible that way. Become flexible that way. Uh, the desire to go work for the fangs, like the Googles, the Apples, the Amazon, that used to be a thing, like, I don't know, four or five years ago. Everybody wanted to work for the fangs. I've had people who trained with me, went and worked for fangs. People are starting to realize that they may not be the bee's knees. It may not be the best thing since sliced bread to go work for a fang. Typically, fang jobs, I think they last typically for an individual about two years, two and a half years. So you make 500000 uh, a year for two years, and then you're burnt. In my opinion, as an ancient crusty nerd with uh, only a little bit of hair left, my opinion is that you concentrate on building up your skill sets, becoming super valuable, and that means being very flexible in what you know, what you can do. And I would suggest getting into freelance or contract work. Maximum earning potential in that regard, and also better lifestyle. That's what I did. Now, if you're wondering if you should take me seriously or not, just keep in mind that when I started developing, I used to have hair down to the back, the back of my ass. I used to have super long hair. So uh, the reason I lost all my hair as a developer is because actually for a short stint of time, I actually started writing Ruby code. Now, I can't say that the Ruby caused my hair loss, but I'll just say this. I had lots of hair, wrote some Ruby, no hair. So between the time I had lots of hair and no hair, I was writing Ruby code. So, you know, so for 2025, let's, we're talking small business development, web development, being nimble, being agile, being technology agnostic. In my career as a freelancer, I found myself using all kinds of different languages and some weird stuff, depending on the needs of the job and when you hit that level where you're truly a pro, you will let go of the need to identify as a particular type of developer. You'll just be a pro developer. Pro developer can approach anything. Yes, you're going to have your likes and dislikes in terms of what you like to do, what you don't like to do. Uh, I'm not a big fan of low-level code, personally. I could do it, but I'm not a fan of it. So one of the great things about being a freelancer, a contractor, once you've established yourself, you can choose what technologies you want to work with. You can choose your clients. You can fire clients. Firing clients, by the way, is one of the greatest gifts to humanity. And you're able to fire clients when you become super valuable in terms of your skills, when you've developed a lot of uh, capability, uh, excuse me, when you develop a lot of contracts, you develop a lot of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A lot of contacts in the business world. So if people come to know you and they come to trust you. So guard your reputation. I was actually talking to somebody in a consult recently, one of my uh, mentoring, uh, one of my mentees in the mentoring program, links below. And this is a professional developer, has a high paying job and was offered her another high paying job. And one of the key factors in deciding whether or not to try to do two jobs at the same time and double-end it. One of the big factors was reputation guarding and reputation building. That's one of the things that you have to understand that's very important as, you're, as you grow in your career, whether your corporate career or freelance or contracting career or just starting businesses. Guard your reputation. Your reputation is very valuable because when you have a good reputation, you will have all kinds of opportunity. When you have a bad reputation, uh, you'll burn more and more bridges and people won't, won't want to work with you. So there you go. If you want to succeed in 2025, keep leveling up your skills. Think light and nimble. One thing, if you do freelance work for small business, you're also going to have to uh, broaden your skill stack, broaden your range a little bit. So you may have to go full stack as opposed to just front end or just back end. But yeah. 100%. You have to go full stack. It's not that hard, by the way. It's not that hard. You're going to be mostly working with uh, relational databases, MySQL, if anything. You're going to be working with PHP, HTML, CSS3, maybe some jQuery, some Bootstrap. doesn't matter. Don't be a purist when it comes to tech because uh, the purity doctrine changes over time. I remember back in 2007 when the world went absolutely insane. They went insane and Ruby was on the ascent. I was one of the few voices in the time 
uh, stirring up the pot, telling people that Ruby was going to get trounced by PHP, and PHP would outlast Ruby. And here we go. Here we go. Yeah, so that's the trend. Light, nimble, small business, broader range of skills, look to do some full stack, uh, learn to, uh, to do things, learn about, excuse me, social media integrations, maybe newsletter integrations. Think about what if you were a small business owner, you owned an independent coffee shop, uh, independent auto shop, uh, small construction company, and they want to get their information out there, they want to get their, uh, their message out on the web to generate business, what are they going to need? They're going to need a nice, light, nimble website. It has to look good. They're going to need uh, perhaps uh, social media integration, maybe newsletter integrations, just having a broad set of skills like this. Again, coding is huge. The last question I'm going to address is, of course, AI. Is AI, is AI going to destroy uh, the development world. One of the biggest problems we have these days about the webs, we have a lot of people out there who claim to know what they're talking about, but they don't. So one of the claims some people are making is that AI is going to destroy the development world over the next couple of years. Not true. Not true. What happens, you have juniors or noobs or pretenders, and they see the AI generate code, writing the boilerplate code. And because they're noobs, they freak out, right? They go, oh my God, it's writing all that code. I guess we don't need coders. If you're a noob watching this, you, I'm telling you, coding, the coding, the actual coding is a small part of the process. A big part of a developer is to figure out all the different pieces, to make choices about technology uses. The easy, the low hanging fruit is don't use Ruby. But beyond that, there's a lot of other decisions that have to be made. And uh, so that's a big part of the job. All, this, all of that configuration it can be simple things like what kind of hosting do you choose, right? Do you go AWS or Azure, something big cloud like that? Or do you go with just shared hosting? Or do you go with a VPS? You know, there's all kinds of different levels. That's a decision that may, has to be made based on the needs of the client. By the way, for 99.9% .9 of us, Shared hosting or private VPS is much more than enough. You don't need the capability of AWS or Azure or something like that, which can give you a big gotcha in the sense that some people will put their stuff on AWS or Azure where you're paying via the hits, by via the traffic, and you can get a huge bill. Whereas you put yourself on a VPS or shared hosting where the bandwidth is unmetered, uh, unlimited essentially, you don't have that. You don't have that worry. You don't have that headache. Anyway, there you go. If you have any questions or disagreements about anything, please put them in the comments below. And I may answer, but I may not. So uh, I'll give you the last few bits of advice for 2024 from Krusty Old Nerd. Most people make it in this life because of a few things. Number one, they have emotional discipline, emotional control. Number two, they keep upping their skills. Keep upping your skills. Number three, they build and guard and protect their reputation. Number four, they live below their means. If you make 50000 a year, you should spend no more than 40000 a year. If you make 200000 a year, you should spend no more than 120000 a year, something like that. Right? Try to save a lot. Try to be disciplined about that. And the final thing, which nobody talks about in the tech channels, you got to keep yourself healthy. you got to keep yourself in shape. You do that, it has a huge impact in all aspects of your life. So exercise every day. Eat natural food, healthy foods. Uh, that's huge. That's huge. If you're in shape, you exercise daily, you eat healthy, natural foods, your cognitive capacity, the supercomputer you have between your ears will become much more performant. So uh, if you want to work at maximum peak efficiency, you want to have a lot of energy, you want to have a lot of brain power, stay healthy. Mind and body, they are one in the same. Healthy mind, healthy body, healthy body, healthy mind. So there, that's my advice. I hope you found it useful. Trust me, uh, you may be young uh, listening to this and the subtlety, the effects of bad diet and lifestyle 
may not be as apparent to you because you're still young and full of piss and vinegar, but uh, it creeps up on you and over time. So why not invest in yourself? I mentioned leaving, living below your means, saving, saving. Especially if you get into freelance, you want to make sure you have a, a bunch of emergency money saved up. I say at least six months to a year, preferably a year to two years if you're freelancing or contracting. This way, trust me, when you don't have to worry about paying any bills for a year or two years, you take a huge amount of pressure off of yourself. You become, a far, more, uh, you become far more powerful in your ability to negotiate contracts and deals with people. Make, you're able to choose more selectively about what type of work that you do. So yes, you want to uh, uh, get yourself into financial order. You want to get your health in order. You want to have the, uh, well, this follow criteria I talked about. And if you do anything, just avoid Ruby. 